I know what you're thinking, great, another stoichiometry video, but this one has something added to it, so stay with me. Alright, so this is the same as last time, except we're going to add percent yield to it. Alright, so molar mass is used to go between grams and moles of a substance. Mole to mole ratio is used to go from one substance to another substance. And molarity is used to go between moles and liters of one substance. So the only one that's used to go between two different things is a mole to mole ratio. So to change from one substance to another, this has to be used for the same substance. So it's grams of one thing to moles of the same thing. And then molarity is the same as molar mass. It's used to go from moles of one thing to liters of that same solution and back to moles if necessary of that same solution. Okay. Percent yield is your actual yield, which is what you actually get in the lab experimentally. And theoretical yield is what we've been doing. So it's, it's, in theory what you should get when you do the math and then to change it to percent we multiply it by 100 all right so let's let's get to this i've got three examples and some of them have multiple parts the first example how many grams of chromium sulfate is needed to react completely with 25 milliliters of 0.75 molar barium chloride all right so the reaction that we have is chromium sulfate barium chloride goes to barium sulfate and chromium chloride. On the AP test, they've gone to the point to where they're always going to give you a chemical reaction. You don't have to come up with them on your own. Uh, it's kind of since they did the rewrite back in 2014, they started doing that. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, but it is what it is. I just didn't feel like typing it out here in this problem. All right, so we want to go to chromium sulfate um, from barium chloride. So I first have to check to make sure this reaction is balanced, and it is. So I know I have to go from here to here. And the only way to change from this substance to this substance is to use a mole to mole ratio. And in order for me to use a mole to mole ratio, I have to have moles. And this, neither of those are strictly just moles. Remember, molarity is moles per liter, and then we have milliliters. So I'm going to go ahead and convert my milliliters to liters. So dividing it by 1,000, I get 0.025 liters. And then I have 0.75 moles per liter. So I'm going to start with this one because there's nothing in the denominator of that unit. So I've got 0.025 liters of the barium chloride solution. And I have 0.75 moles of barium chloride per every single liter of the barium chloride solution. So I had to put liters on the bottom so it would cancel with liters on the top. Now since I have moles of barium chloride right here, I can use my mole to mole ratio and it's just one to one. So one mole of barium chloride for every single mole of chromium sulfate. Now they're one to one so it wouldn't make a difference if you messed up, but we always want the unit that we have down on the bottom to be the same as the unit that we have on the top so that they cancel out. If I had put chromium sulfate down here and barium chloride was up here, then we would square barium chloride and have chromium sulfate still left in the bottom and that's not what we want to do. Next, I have to use the molar mass of chromium sulfate. So one mole of chromium sulfate is 148 grams of chromium sulfate. The molar mass, right? Okay, and then if I do the math here, 0 0.025 times 0 0.75 times 148, I end up with 2.78 grams or 2.8 grams of chromium sulfate would be required to react completely with the other reactant. Uh, the next question, how many grams of the precipitate is formed? So in this problem, the precipitate is the barium sulfate. It's insoluble. And I'm going to start with the same thing from the other problem that was given to me in the previous problem. I could start with the 2.8 grams of chromium sulfate, but the reason I don't like to do that is simply because if I made a mistake getting that number, then I would get the wrong answer for my next one. So I'm gonna just start with what's given to me in the problem up here. 
and I'm going to do the same thing and start with liters instead of milliliters. So 0 0.025 liters of barium chloride. And for every liter of barium chloride solution, I have 0 0.75 moles of barium chloride. Now one mole of barium chloride for every single mole of barium sulfate, because that's my precipitate. And my molar mass of barium sulfate is 233.4 grams of barium sulfate for every single mole. And if I check my unit, moles of barium sulfate cancel out, moles of barium chloride cancel out, liters of the barium chloride solution cancel out, and I end up with grams of barium sulfate, which is what I want. So if I multiply 0 0.025 times 0 0.75 times 233.4, I end up with 4.38 grams of barium sulfate. And then the last one says if 4.08 grams of the precipitate forms, what is the percent yield? So this is my actual yield. And remember the percent yield is actual over theoretical. So I'm going to put 4.08 divided by 4.38. So that's 0 0.9315 multiplied by 100 gives me 93%. So I had a 93% yield on that if I got 4.08 and I'm supposed to get, according to the math, 4.38. Now there's all sorts of different reasons why you wouldn't get your, your um, theoretical yield in the lab. Um, and we can talk about that when we do the labs. A lot of the time you don't. Some reactions get as little as 25%. It really depends on your method and what you're producing and if it's producing side products um, if it's hard to isolate from all the other products in the solution, there's all sorts of factors that contribute to your percent yield. Example two, it says how many grams of silver nitrate are needed to produce 13.272 grams of silver chromate if the reaction has a percent yield of 88.7%. So this is a little bit backwards. So need to be able to read this very, very closely to understand what is happening here. What it's saying is that I have to get this. So for whatever reason, I have to make 13.272 grams of silver chromate. But the method that I use only yields an 88.7% yield. So in order for me to make this as my actual yield, remember it's actual over theoretical, I'm going to plug this into actual. Down here is my theoretical yield times 100, right? would be equal to 88.7%. So if I rearrange this equation, I would divide by 100, right? So I'd get 0.887. And I would end up having to divide the 13.272 grams divided by 0 0.887. And that would give me my theoretical yield that I need to use for the math here. That ends up being 14.962 grams of silver chromate. So theoretically, I have to use that number in order to get how many grams of the silver nitrate I would actually put into this to produce that. So I'm going to start with the 14.962 grams of silver chromate. So I'm here and I want to go to here. So if I'm going to go from one substance to another substance, I have to use a mole to mole ratio to do that. And to use a mole to mole ratio, I have to be in moles, number one. And number two, it has to be a balanced reaction. And this is not balanced. So this is a tricky, tricky thing to do to someone. Um, but I've seen it. I've seen, I've not just done it, but I have I've seen it done to me. Okay, so I've got silver has two silvers right here, the silver chromate, so I need two silver nitrates. And then that gives me two nitrates here. So I'm gonna put a two in front of this. So that gives me two nitrates. And then I have two potassiums and two potassiums. So this is balanced now. Okay, so going back to the problem, if I have 14.962 grams of silver chromate, in order for me to change over to silver nitrate and use that mole to mole ratio, I have to get this grams to moles. So to go from grams to moles, we use the molar mass, and the molar mass of silver chromate is 332 
grams of silver chromate and we have to put that in the bottom so the grams can cancel out and that would be for one mole so every mole of silver chromate has a mass of 332 grams and then we have one mole of silver chromate we can use that mole to mole ratio makes two moles or needs two moles of silver nitrate all right and then to get back to grams of silver nitrate and I have moles right now I have to use the molar mass of silver nitrate so one mole of silver nitrate has a molar mass of 170 grams so if I take 14.962 and then divide it by 332 multiply by 2 and then multiply by 170 because I can ignore those ones they're not going to change anything I end up getting 15.32253 grams of silver nitrate so rounding to significant figures I get 15.3 grams last example and this one's weird in a certain experiment we have 28 milliliters of 0 0.250 molar nitric acid and 53 milliliters of 0 0.320 molar potassium hydroxide and we're going to calculate the mass of the water formed in the resulting reaction what is the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions in excess after the reaction goes to completion so for this I'm going to go ahead and write the reaction and it's an acid base reaction because I have an OH and an H here and we're going to make KNO3 and water so I want to know how many grams of this water will form from these two so this is another limiting reactant problem right and I have to go from nitric acid to water and then potassium hydroxide to water and figure out which one is going to run out first and by running out first it determines how much product will be made so I'm going to start with the nitric acid and I'm going to start with milliliters of the nitric acid and I'm going to go ahead and convert it to liters so I've got 0 0.028 liters of the nitric acid solution and that's for 0 0.250 moles of nitric acid per liter of the nitric acid solution and now I can use my mole to mole ratio and it's going to be one of these for every one of the waters that's formed one mole of HNO3 for one mole of water and then I'm going to use the molar mass of water of 18 grams of water for every mole of water formed now one thing I want to clear up um, just in case whenever you're doing one of these problems you only look at what you're starting with and what you're ending with all the other stuff that's involved in the reactions it's irrelevant you only look at what you're starting with and what you're ending with so here if I do the math 0 0.028 times 0.25 times 18 I end up getting 0 0.126 grams of water Okay, so just going to kind of put a half box around that and then I'm going to do the other part. So now I have 53 milliliters of 0 0.320 molar KOH. So 0 0.053 liters of KOH and 0 0.320 moles of KOH per liter of KOH. Use the mole to mole ratio and it's one to one so I have one mole of KOH for every single mole of H2O and then the molar mass of H2O and that would end up giving me 0 0.305 grams of water okay so if I compare the two answers that I got for water this is my actual amount of water formed because at that point I'm completely out of HNO3 so this uh, nitric acid is my limiting reactant which means that KOH is my excess reagent because I'll have extra of it left over it's not all going to get a chance to react because I can't form that much water so I have extra potassium well I have lots of potassium in the solution but I have extra hydroxide in the solution so when it asks here what is the concentration of H plus or OH in excess after the reaction I have to look at how much OH is left over after the reaction goes to completion so in order for me to get the concentration 
concentration is moles over liters. And so this is tricky. Not only do we have to find the moles of hydroxide that's left over, but I have to have the liters of the total solution to put in the bottom. So the total solution here is going to be 81 milliliters. So liters of the solution um, is the 81 milliliters or 0 0.081 liters. Now all I have to do is find the moles of hydroxide and then I can divide by the liters of the total solution and that would give me my numerality. So to find the moles of hydroxide is a little bit tricky because some of it has already reacted to form this water. So not all of the hydroxide that we started with is still left in solution. So to do this, I'm gonna take my 0.126 grams of water and find out how many moles of hydroxide would be required to make that, right? So I'm looking for moles of hydroxide required. So I've got 18 grams of water for every single mole of water. And then for one mole of water, I need one mole of KOH. So that gives me 0 0.007 moles of KOH required. So to find out how much is left over, if it took that much to make that water, to make this water, right, then I need to know how much I started with. So I have 0 0.053 liters of KOH, and I've got 0 0.320 moles of KOH per every liter. So that tells me that I started with 0 0.0. 169 moles of KOH. Okay, so if I started with this amount much and I used up this much making the water, then that means that what is left over is the difference between those. So left over is 0 0.0169 moles of OH, because there's only one OH in every single one of these, minus 0 0.007 moles of OH, and that's going to give me 0 0.0099 left over. Barely fit it. Okay, so if that's how much is left over, I'm going to go up to the top of the screen now to find the molarity, right? I have 0 0.0 nine nine moles of OH left in the solution just hanging out because there's no more hydrogen left to react with and I'm going to divide it by the total liters of the solution to find the molarity in the container and that is going to give me a value of 0.12 and that's for the hydroxide left over in the solution so 0.12 is the answer to the second question here so this last question, when you're looking for this, uh, what is left over, what is in excess after the reaction goes to completion, is kind of like if you go shopping and you start off with $100 and then you go home and you want to know how much money you have left over. Uh, let's say you couldn't count it, right, because it's in the bank. You'd have to know how much money you spent. So this right here is how much was spent to make the water and this is how much we started with right here. So the difference between them is how much was left over.